today's video I'm looking at the back gear on the Boxford lathe, checking the belts for any signs of oil or wear, and checking the drive pulleys in the cabinet for signs of oil or wear. Now a few weeks ago I turned a thread, it was a one and a half inch by 18 teeth per inch UNF. And that thread required the back gear to be engaged. Now when you engage the back gear on the Boxford, you need to oil the centre pulley in the headstock. And to do this, there's a small hole on the front of the machine that lets you put oil through into the headstock. Now the problem with this is you can't see how much oil you're putting in. If you put too much in, it ends up everywhere in the headstock. Today in the workshop, I'm having a look at the belt drive. I have a feeling it's slipping, and that's because the last job I did on this was cut a thread, uh, one and a half inch 18 UNF, and that involved using the back gear, which is this lever above, just undo the pins, that disconnects the interlock so it'll turn the power off to the motor and I can move it across into gear now if I just turn the spindle to get the gears to engage there we go it's in back gear and once it's in back gear if you use it a lot, you're supposed to oil the centre hole there, which puts oil into the centre of the spindle. And on the rear of the machine, there's another hole where you oil. And that feeds oil along the shaft to the gears at each end of the shaft. Now, if you put too much oil in, the oil will just spray all around on the inside of the case and can get on the main belt. So what I want to do today, take the top cover off, which involves undoing four screws, remove the plate and have a look at how much oil's inside. I may need to get a piece of cloth just to wipe some of the oil and soak it up, but we'll have a look first. Just undo the four screws. plate comes up you can see here look it's already oil well, that's telling me straight away I have too much oil in the top <laughs> you see when I turn the lever to engage the back gear it does two things the first thing it does it slides this shaft along and engages the gear with the gear on the other end and at the same time it opens the the drive and disconnects the two pins that go into the drive holes so it disconnects the drive from the belt and it connects the gear on the other end of the shaft to the drive so the power is transmitted from the belt through the gears to the other side of the belt. This is the lever to engage the back gear. Here you can see one of the gears on a shaft and on the other end of a shaft is another gear. Here is the gear on the main shaft and this is the drive belt going down to the motor. 
So when you turn or move this lever, it dis moves this gear over inside and brings it in line with the gear on the back shaft. And also at the same time it disconnects this gear from the belt. So if I do that, you see the gear's moved out and it's disconnected from the belt. This one on this side is engaged with the gear here and the gear that's moved across is engaged with the gear on the end here. This side is disconnected and you can see one of the two pins here. So the power comes up to the belt, turns this part, turns this gear, drives this gear, drives that gear and then turns the gear back on the shaft that turns the chuck. Now this shaft is not split, it's a solid shaft and all that happens is the belt will move freely on the shaft and because it can move freely on the shaft obviously it will need some lubrication and that's why it has a lubricating hole in the middle. If I turn Put it back into gear, turn it round. You can see there's a lubricating hole there, which normally you can't get at from the top, you have to feed it through the hole in the front, so you can't see how much oil you're putting in. Any excess oil finds its way out inside and splashes around. So, what I'll do now is Engage that. I'll start it up and we'll see if there's any excess oil. I think you just want to wipe over with a paper towel to absorb any oil. I'll just check that the the belt has not got any oil on it. Another problem you have with these Boxfords, if you pump too much grease into the bearings it just comes out on the inside and it gets thrown everywhere. Now I check this about once a year so it's not something you have to do every week or every month. Just be careful when you're oiling and greasing the bearings and the spindle. See what I mean about the grease? I've cleaned enough dirt and grease out of there for now. Now I'll just give it a spray with some brake and clutch cleaner which should remove most of the grease and oil and wipe it over and it's finished.
Now I'll replace the top cover and we'll have a look at the drive belts in the cabinet. On this shaft you have the end of the main drive belt, which is here, in the middle. And to the left you have five V pulleys with your belt for your speed. And at the bottom a matching set of five V pulleys and it goes across to another belt which then goes down to the motor. You can lift by pulling this lever you disconnect the belt on the left so I can take this belt off the bottom pulley I can check the belt face for oil or grease there's nothing on there and you can check the the V's in the pulleys for any wear now that one's okay put that back if you're leaving your lathe for some time without being used I would recommend that you slacken the tension off with this lever just so the belt is not under tension it all looks all right down there you can just see on the back of the cabinet a shiny film of oil which obviously has come from the top so I'll get a bit more paper wipe that off and I think that would be okay if you've lost track of where the belts go see if I can draw one in. There's a belt from the top, this is a chuck, it's the headstock and it comes down there. That goes just to a shaft with the pulleys on the end, the V pulleys, for the different speeds. Then there's another belt that comes down on this side depending on what pulley you've selected for the speed. That goes to another shaft. And on that shaft, on this end there's another belt that goes down to the motor. And that's so the pulley system works and the belt system on the Boxford with the motor in the cabinet underneath. Okay. That's it for today. Hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.